Hello and welcome back to Surly Tim's. Now this would be one of my videos in regards to top five movies. And in this particular instance, these are my top five favorite films. We all have likes and dislikes, and many of us rank those things due to personal preferences, and that's why I started the top five film episodes. With that being said, without the films of Akira Kurosawa, the Spaghetti Western and Star Wars franchise would not exist, provably. And as a martial arts film enthusiast, it would be dishonest of me to not include Kurosawa's Seven Samurai from 1954. And following this past Halloween season and how I finished it, as usual, with Night of the Living Dead from 1968, and this was my first video, which I still own my original VHS copy, that I started my video collection with back in the mid-80s. And possibly the one film that causes me those grief among newer zombie genre fans but I'm of the mind that you should start your journey with zombie movies with the original classic by George Romero. At the turn of the century, a glut of epic films based on many literary classics were dropped in our laps. And that's when the works of my favorite author were given the proper respect that they deserve on their way to the big screen. As a fan, Peter Jackson was a perfect creator to bring this project to life. The 2001 to 2003 films, to me, are best viewed as one complete movie although that process has become exhausting as I've gotten older. One of the most influential movies of my life turned 90 in April of this year, and I spent the majority of my youth voraciously consuming black and white films from the golden age of horror and science fiction, which expanded to include the many eras to come, but one in particular stands above them all, and ironically that film was about a giant primate by the name of King Kong. And I may do a deep dive into the film at a later date, but this is the film that made me interested in the silver screen. Due to the practical effects used in this movie, I became interested in breaking down every element that a project offers to understand it better. And finally, my favorite film of all time. I knew that I had to see it when I first read about it in an issue of Starlog back in 1981. I grew up idolizing those who chose to walk among the stars. Names like Neil Armstrong and Chuck Yeager were held in high esteem by most of the men in my family, and I wanted to be an astronaut as a child, like many kids my age. Although I lacked the qualities to be one, which I discovered as I grew to maturity, the right stuff from 1982 was based on a 1979 Tom Wolfe novel of the same name, and has remained my favorite film from the mo first moment that I saw it. To me, it is one of the finest shot films that I have ever seen in my life, and it's impossible to convince me otherwise. Well, thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.